Hello everybody, this is Danny back from Deep South Homestead working on the 1950 model Cub Formal. Guys, it's time to change the generator belt and the fan belt on it. There's some things that we're going to show you how to do here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the generator and we're going to loosen that belt and get it loose first. To start with, the generator has three bolts on it. You have your adjustment bolt on the top. You have one under the bottom here and one on the back back here. So we're going to start off with the one on the back. And you're going to need two wrenches to do this. You're going to want to loosen them up. Now they don't need to be real tight. You're going to want it where the uh, generator will actually move in there. That's pretty loose. It just takes one on this one here. These are all half inch wrenches. Okay, there we go. I've seen it move. You just need a half inch wrench, two of them. All right, that folds in. That's about as far as that's going to go. Right there. I believe. Let me. It's moving a little bit. A little bit. The voltage regulator hits the uh, radiator hose is what happens. But I think we can probably get the belt off there. These belts are old, old belts. And if I'm going to go this far, I figure I'm going to go ahead and put new ones on it. Now, we have it loose, and it's just kind of hanging there. Now, I'm going to pull this back, back up move this belt here out of the way down there because where we're going to be working at is actually down in here. Now we got a light right here. We're going to turn this light on see if this will help to be able to see. Now this is a 13 16 wrench. And guys, there's actually two nuts in here. I'm going to show you one before I can get my hand in there. That's the biggest issue. Okay, you see this nut right here? Don't ever turn this nut. This nut is locked in between these two pieces of metal right here. If you turn this nut with a wrench, you will break your fan adjustment thing here. You want to put your wrench on the nut in front of it. There is a nut right here in front of it. This is the nut you want to be loosening up. And it may be tight, and you can put a wrench on the back if you just need to hold it if you want to be safe because these are cast. And these two ears right here will break off. And as you loosen this, if I can get my wrench in here, this is working in a really tight spot here. This whole shaft turns. All right, now, hopefully we've got this thing loose enough. Now, a lot of people will take the radiator shroud right here off. We're going to try to do it without having to take the radiator shroud off. It may be a little difficult, but we're going to see if we can do it without having to disassemble the whole front of the tractor here. And it may not be possible. I don't. I may not have it loose enough is one thing. Let me see. Oh, yeah, there it goes. All right, it fell down. What we want to do is first we want to try to get this fan belt up and over that. We've got to get it off of the pulley on the bottom of the motor down here. There we go. It's coming. It's really a difficult place to, to get to get that belt off of there. You need it off the bottom? Yep, need it off the bottom. Backwards or forward? Forward toward the radiator in the front. It's down underneath it. There's no spacing, or is there? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Takes two people. I don't know what good that did, right, but it's now, loose. We've got this up. Now what we've got to try to do is we've got to try to work this belt up. This belt is in really bad shape. It's not limber. It's very, very stiff. Hold on. We don't want to bend that shroud because if we bend that shroud, the fan will hit it. I don't really know if we're going to be able to do this without taking that shroud off. 
It might be simpler to try to take the shroud off. I don't know if we actually can get it off. We may have to disassemble everything. Well, we'll probably have to disassemble a lot of it to get it off of there. Um, I'm trying to, I don't want to bump the radiator either. So I think we might be better. I thought we could do it without taking the shroud off, but for safety reasons, I think we should probably take the shroud off. Well, we've determined that we're probably gonna have to take the fan completely off. And you have to be very careful now because the shroud won't come off. The bolts are so, they're so old and so rusted up in there that we really can't get them off. And I don't want to do a bunch of hammering on anything to try to get them loose. So our only other option here is to take the fan completely loose and try, well, to be honest with you, I don't think that's going to even benefit us by taking the fan a loose. Okay. That's a problem when you work with these old tractors like this. A lot of this stuff is so old that you can't get it to come a loose. Now comes the daunting task of working this fan belt around this fan and not hit the radiator because the radiator is an old radiator. We don't want to mess it up mess the flues up on it or something. Boy, this belt is old and it is hard. It ain't wanting to bend at all. It's not limber at all. I mean, you can sh you can see what, how thick it is. It's uh, it doesn't look like it's wore that bad, but it's really hard. And when you bend it, see the compression fractures in it. It's it's getting old and dry rotting. So we got we got to replace this one. Now let's see about the other one. It's a lot tinier belt and hopefully, I'm, I'm a little concerned about it even fitting over the fan blade. How would you get it if not? <laughs> after looking at after looking at this, the only way we can get that little belt out, it, it ain't long enough to go over the fan blades. And I have nowhere to stick my hand back in here. To my hand will not fit in there. <laughs> I used to complain about all the Japanese made stuff that they didn't make it where you could get to it. But you know what? I'm quickly realizing American made stuff was just like it. The problem's going to be holding that nut to put it back. <laughs> Something so simple. Something so simple, I've got to now take the whole generator off of it to be able to take that fan belt out. Uh, it, it, the belt, that, that little, I don't know if it's the wrong size belt that somebody's put on it in the past or what, but it's, uh, let's see if this won't work, move this out of the way where I can get right here. Okay, now. Trying to keep that fan out of that radiator. That's my, that's my main goal right now.
Okay. Now, let's see if I can figure out how to get this off of there. And it still may not. Well, guys, this is not coming up far enough either. So, Plan C? I don't know. I got, I'm, I'm going to end up having to try to figure out a way to get that shroud off of that tractor. Well, we got one out. This was the easy one. Who knew I'd have to disassemble a whole tractor? <laughs> to do the belts. Sometimes just a little tapping on. That's, that baby's there. <laughs> hmm. I can buy new screws, but they're rusted to that frame there. And then paint it over. Yeah, and then paint it on top of that. It just ain't happening. Well, guys, we got it off of there. Uh, that's how that's, that's the size of the belt. It ain't long enough to go over the fan blades and just come out like I did the other one. So usually they disassembled everything to fix they that. They had sure. to have disassembled a whole tractor part here to just to do that. And I mean, I had a time, and and this was a stiff belt, and it's wore out and. I mean, you can see it. It looks bad. It's done starting to come apart here in the middle. Uh, if I can even find this belt without having to order it online, that's going to be the whole issue. I may not be able to find one quite that little. And it makes me wonder, is this one actually... It couldn't have been too little because it was adjusted right right here. So I think maybe that's okay. It's just that when you get these old tractors like this and you can't get that stuff out of there... I may still sit here and toy with trying to figure out a way to get that screw out of there and get new ones to go back in place of it if I can because I'd whole lot rather put a new new screw back in something uh, in case I have to do this again. I mean, I don't want to be doing this for once. Well, guys, I, I eventually just had to take the shroud off. I had to just take the chance and... I managed to figure out a way to get them little short screws in there. It was all rusted up out of it. So I'm going to be cleaning that up, repainting it. I got the fan off and realized that uh, because this thing's set up for a long, long period of time, dirt daubers has filled in all the holes everywhere with dirt. And that'll make a fan get out of balance and sit and shake and vibrate. When it's running but what i also realized was this thing has oil inside it and uh oil's pouring out right here now that i've got it off of there so i don't know if i'm going to have to uh try to locate a seal to go in this because that's uh that's what keeps everything oiled with this here turning like this there's a these uh I haven't found a video where it shows, I guess I have to take all these bolts out right here to uh, to get this apart. I do see a screw right here, and more than likely that's where you fill it up with oil at. But it is sitting here just pouring oil out of it now. So, And I did notice whenever I went to undo the bolt that uh, oil was all over all this. So I knew that there was a problem, I just didn't know where the oil was coming from. But but I do know now, so now I've got to even go a step further 
and take something else apart. Okay, we're going to uh, work on the oil pressure gauge here. Uh, it's kind of not put together right. Actually, it's not even the right gauge. This come off of a well pump. Uh, this is a, a well pump gauge. This goes up to 100 pound pressure like a well. So we need to put the right gauge back on it. But right now, uh, I'm going to take this valve system off. I don't know what this is or why it's even there. But we're going to take this loose. Get this off of here right now because it is in our way of working. We're going to take that out. i got to take that out. I'm going to end up having to ruin it to get it out. But I don't guess it's going to matter. I just always hate ruining anything. What are you using? Take these vice grips and... And I might not have to run it. I don't know. Okay, we got that out of there. Now, all right, I'm going to put just a touch of this uh, pipe thread stuff on here. Now, you want to be careful. You do not want to get this in that gauge down in there. So, I'm going to just put a very minute amount of it on there. I'm a very precautionous kind of person about leaking and stuff. I know I'm going to be replacing all this, but in the meantime, I might not be able to uh, get exactly what I need. So, these fine threads, you have to be very, very careful with them that you don't cross thread them. Yeah, that'll work. Let's see if we can't tighten that down just a little bit. And This is the blessings of having a shop full of just bits and pieces and stuff. I was able to go out to the shop and find this little plug to go in there. And it's actually saved me from having to go to town and buy one. All right, guys. Today on the 1950s model Cub Farm All, we're going to talk about something that I've yet to see anyone talk about. Greasing the distributor drive ho driver housing and the distributor shaft itself. Now there's a plug right here. Uh, actually, we're gonna take this plug out right here. I'm gonna lay that to the side. There was an exactly the same plug up under here in the shaft housing underneath here. The book says to screw an alamite into this second hole in the distributor housing under here and to pump the grease until a hole com a grease comes out the hole on the opposite side of the shaft in the back back here. So that's what we're gonna do. Usually it doesn't take but just a pump or so. We're gonna stick the grease gun on here. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna just like, see the grease coming out? I'm pumping it. Okay, that tells us that there's plenty of grease around the distributor shaft. Now, we're gonna take a rag and we're gonna wipe that up because we don't want grease getting all down in here and messing up everything. All right, what it says to do next is to take this alamite out of here. Once we do that, it says to wipe that off. I don't see any trash in there. It says to screw it into this one. Now, this one's going to be a little bit more tedious. There we go. It says to screw it into that one. And then take your grease gun and to actually put, it says to put several pumps into this. Now, mine is pretty much full already, but we'll just make a pump or two here to, like we got several pumps in there now. And then what we'll do is we'll remove this alamite. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, just so I remember. To keep this done, you want to do this about once every 500 hours or once every six months, however, depending on the use of the tractor, but at least once every 500 hours, you want to check these two here. So what I'm going to do, rather than put this plug back in this hole right here, 
I'm going to leave the alumite in there. That way it will remind me to put a couple pumps of grease in this and to check my shaft in 500 hours. All right, so we're gonna take our plug now and we're gonna put it back in the bottom of the distributor shaft here. Take our screwdriver and we're gonna put that back in there. That way, we don't have to worry about any trash getting in there. And we'll leave the other plug out. We can leave our alamite in here as a reminder. I really don't know why the company didn't put an alamite in there to start with as a reminder for people, but this is the one thing you never hear anybody talking about right here, is greasing or lubricating. It's called lubricating the distributor shaft and the drive gear housing. 